Oh, say, uh, well, welcome everybody. My name is Craig Blanchett and it's my, um, really it's my privilege to bring you this, uh, what we call a healthy huddle. Um, and every week, uh, as you know, we cover uh, some type of a health conversation, a health, a health topic. Um, what we find, and I'll say this, I say this every time, is what we find is that um, if uh, the journey towards becoming healthy is a lifelong journey, and um, it's, it seems to go better. There's a uh, scripture that says that um, um, uh, life is better when you have um, more than just yourself because it's actually best if you have three at least because it says a cord of three strands is not easily broken. But it also says to walk through this journey of life together because um, um, woe to the person who falls down and doesn't have somebody there to help them get back up. And um, so anyway, it's a, it's a process where we're trying to become healthier, as healthy as we can be on, on planet Earth. And um, it's, it's hard to do that over time. You just kind of get worn out and just stuff happens. And so when we do this together, um, we inspire each other, we learn tips from each other, and we just, we just do life together. So uh, super exciting. That's why we do this every week. So tonight we're going to have a the healthy recipe of this week is scones. And I believe this is a, a recipe that takes one of our amazing, highly nutritious uh, Metafast meal replacements and makes it into a scone. Some of you may not realize the science behind those Metafast meal replacements. A lot of, a lot of us get the idea that Metafast is a diet food, uh, but it's actually it's the perfect nutrition for your body to get what it needs. And then we use it in such a way that allows us to burn fat for fuel. And so it's, it's not diet food at all. It's actually really quality human food. And so um, it's also convenient, which that makes it um, really good. So let me uh, share my screen here and we'll play this video and then think of questions that might come up, maybe some variations that you can ask Steph because we have Master Chef Stephanie here with us tonight. And then, um, and then we'll get into a little bit of our health topic. So here we go. Okay, today we are going to make scones out of two packages of oatmeal. To make the scones, you take two packages of oatmeal. It doesn't matter what kind. You can use any kind you want. The recipe that I found a while ago was for blueberry, but um, today we are doing apple cinnamon. You put two packets of the oatmeal, two teaspoons or packets of Splenda or Stevia, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, a half plus two and a quarter teaspoons of water. You bake it at 400 degrees for 20 minutes.
Oh, Craig, you're muted. I always do that so I don't make any extra noise and then I forget to turn off the mute. So thank you, Linda. I was doing my mime. You guys, you guys laugh at me every week when I do that because I do it every week. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm, I have a recipe here for um, blueberry uh, scones uh, that I'm going to um, uh, actually what I'll do is I will put it in the chat window and then you can click on save chat um, and uh, you, then you will be able to um, you'll be able to get it but I'm also going to put it in a little document here and I'll have that up here shortly or you can just copy it's pretty simple it looks like so any questions about blueberry scones or did this maybe trigger an idea that the the Metafast meal replacements are could be used uh, to do different things and make different things you may not have thought about that um, you can make pretty much any one of the shakes into a pancake with a couple little modifications you ever had a tomato pancake I have yeah it's more like a pizza crust actually but so um, any questions about the scones or have you has any of you tried the scones um, Craig the question from Jenny is how much water Oh, but maybe you posted that in the link with the recipe. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, I have a question. Pour wet quarter cup measuring cup. Steph, do you? Let me unmute you, Stephanie. Um, do you? It looks like it says a quarter cup total liquid. Um, is that about right? You think? Oh, I unmuted the wrong person. Let me see here. Unmute Steph. There we go. I'm trying to find the recipe myself right now, but because I was thinking it was more closer to a half a cup. The it's thing with the blueberry scones is you have, to, yeah, you have to be really careful. You don't get um, too much water, or I mean, they still turn out, they still taste okay, but most of us think of a scone as kind of being a little bit um, dry and um, flaky. And if you put too much water, then it's going to be moist and it's going to be more like a cookie. It's still going to taste good, but um, it's definitely better with, you know, so what I do is I usually measure the water um, and the actual recipe when you do the blueberry one has um, lemon ex extract in it, which brings out the flavor of the blueberries. Mm. And it's very little lemon extract. Um, but... Um, you know, it's, it's uh, like I said, you can make it with any of them and they still are good. It's just kind of whatever consistency you like your uh, scones. Yeah. Got so, it. Steph, I'm assuming that in, in lieu of lemon extract, you could probably use a little lemon juice incorporated yes. in water. Yes, I've done that too. Okay. It, it's a scant half a cup of water. So what I do is I usually put, like the last time I made it, I put, um, I think I put two tablespoons of lemon juice in my half a cup measure, and then I didn't fill it all the way to the top of the half a cup, and I just kind of blended it into the scones until it was kind of a, um, not doughy, but... Um, can't think of the word. Um, Gooey. So if you mix it, but it's it's just you know um, dense. Anyway, um, and then if it needed a little bit more water, but every time I make any kind of the metafast like cookies or brownies or anything like that, I always start with a little less water because you can always add a little bit more, but you can't take it out once you put it in. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, of course, all of them turn out regardless. I mean, even when you get a little too much water, they just it's just a different consistency. Got it. And, oh, I'm actually working on emailing the recipe at the moment. No, I got it. I think I got it worked Did out. Did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I have. I found it on one of your previous emails to me, and um, I just uploaded it as a PDF, and... Um, I will have the link 
to it here in just a second. So I'm glad you were talking for a while there while I was scrambling. <laughs> it's kind of fun though. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, yes, the metafax is just a tool. We all need to realize that and remember that. This is a lifestyle change. But sometimes when our clients get a little bit, oh, I'm really kind of tired of eating this stuff. I mean, I've had people that it's totally changed their whole attitude on wow, oh my goodness, this is absolutely dish delicious because I have, you know, cookie recipes and brownie recipes and muffin recipes and, of course, the scone recipe and the French toast recipe. And it just changes it up enough. It's like sometimes it's like you give them a whole new lease on life. They feel like they're starting a brand new program all over again and they get excited again. And Because, you know, our whole life is about eating and why not enjoy every single meal we get to eat? I agree with you. My uh, One of the things that I've always said is that when I'm eating or when I'm thinking about food, and, and th- consider these three particular pieces. Um, most of the time when we're thinking about food, we're thinking about um, what's what tastes good. I, I have never in my life said, I'm looking for some B6 today. Hmm. Or I'm looking for a little magnesium. I think I'm a little low in, um, I don't know, riboflavin, right? Who, who says that? Nobody, right? But the reality is, is that the ways that we get nutrients is from foods that we eat. And so in order to get the wide spectrum, because you don't need just one or two nutrients, you need, there's 24 vitamins and minerals that are the minimum. And so the reality is, is that we need to get all of those every day. Well, I don't who does that, right? And so one of the neat things about um, uh, foods is it needs to be tasty, but it also needs to be healthy. And then the third one, because sometimes when something that's tasty, it's not healthy. And if it's healthy, it's not tasty. Or if it's healthy and tasty, it's not convenient. Takes too much time. And so you might do it once, but you're not going to do it all the time. So you're going to go to the easy, pre-made, pre-packaged, processed, whatever right? And so um, I always look for foods that fall within those three. If you have a circle for tasty, another circle for healthy, and another circle for convenient, the foods that fit in the middle of all three of those, that's like over time, that's what you're going to gravitate towards. And with the lean and greens that we teach you how to make, and with the Metafast meals as supplements, those are, they fit in that center category. And so you won't get worn out. You won't have to settle for taste over health or health over taste. And so uh, that's, um, that's those things that I look at. And so these um, scones um, obviously fit in the healthy, tasty, and convenient. So excellent. All right. So I put that link in the um, – uh, is that – what? there is that triad again. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, I've heard it called a um, – Triad. I can't remember what it was. Venn diagram. I've heard it called a Venn diagram. Some whatever that means. I don't know who Venn is. Anyway, um, so any other questions before we move on to the next section? We're going to talk a little bit about movement. All right. So we're going to do another recipe again next week, and um, I will tell you what we're going to do for next week. We are going to do, we've almost got all of them done. Uh, spaghetti, scarf, French toast. What? Yeah, I know, right? So French toast will be next week. And um, so we're going to jump into that then. And now we're going to go into a little chapter, um, chapter 14 on Dr. A's Habits of Health. So um, actually, before we jump into this, though, let's introduce, we have a couple of people that are first timers. And so um, if you have a guest, um, or if you're a guest, why don't you unmute yourself, uh, tell us what your name is, who invited you, and where you're from. And if you don't know how to unmute yourself, just go like this, and I will uh, unmute you. Hi, Jackie. Okay, you're unmuted. Thank you. I'm Jackie, and I was invited by Eileen and um, Alex. Aha. Good job, Jackie. I, you know, I haven't met you in person, but I've seen, I'm part of one of your little Facebook groups, I think. And so I've seen, I've, I've heard you 
I've seen you text, but I haven't yeah. actually met you. So nice to meet you finally, Jackie. You as well. All right. And it lo- is Howard, uh, are you a guest? I haven't seen your face before. Nah. Your first time? I'm a first timer. Right. Okay. And uh, where are you from? Uh, down in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge. Okay. And then um, who invited you? Uh, Alex uh, McMillan and Howard Partridge. Okay. Yep. I know them well. Howard and Alex. Yeah, a lot of um, Howard's, um, Howard's been really doing an amazing job himself. We're going to actually be celebrating him a little bit later as one of our new coaches. So it's pretty exciting. So welcome, Howard. Welcome, Jackie. Nice to have you guys uh, uh, on our meeting. Uh, anybody else? Now, Melody hasn't been here in a while, but uh, Melody's uh, been around the block a few times. And she's back in the huddle. I unmuted you there, Melody, if you want to say hi and where hi. you're from and who invited you. Praise my uh, health coach. It has been for a couple of years. I, I'm kind of up and down, as I'm sure everybody is, and um, he's trying to get me hooked up again. I'm leaving for Cabo in June, so I got a couple months to kind of get back on the on the bandwagon here. So yep. we tried to connect yesterday, but we didn't do it, Craig. What happened? No, I know, right? I'm glad <laughs> to see you today. Yeah. So, but Craig's my, Craig, my health coach, and I'm in Oregon, Tigard, Oregon, and I just spent the day doing yard work. So I look like yeah. I'm my picture there. It's <laughs> hot, sweaty out there doing yard work. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here on this huddle. So let's yeah. get it. So. Thanks, Melody. Good to see you for a while. Good to see you again. Yeah, Linda. Yeah, Craig, I've got um, Jeremy is a guest of mine. And he's actually repping him and his wife. His wife couldn't make it, but um, I don't know if he is – able to unmute or if he's there can you see him or find him Jeremy? i can see him oh he might be on the telephone maybe i think he might be. can you hear me yes loud and clear perfect yeah so my name is jeremy i'm from colorado colorado springs specifically and i'm linda's newest victim victim <laughs> <Nice>. i mean <laughs> <laughs> no that's appropriate we know yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's awesome craig i have i've only met his wife but um, they're they're going to start start program here in a, in a in a little bit. So awesome! Well, yeah, we do this every week, and you know we don't. It's not like somebody told me when I became a health coach, "Hey, you should create some community." But it just sort of happened, and so we do this once a week. There's no obligation to come here. Come if you want. Come if you find value. But I will I will say, the more connected you are, the better better your long-term results are because this health is something that only works if you practice it. It doesn't help just to know it. You have to practice it. And so when we're together, it helps us to practice it better. We learn stuff and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So, oh, Linda just dropped us. I know. Mm-hmm. And then I think Cindy's got some um, people just checking out the community as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cindy, why don't you, um, I think you introduced them in the chat, but Go ahead. Yeah, I, um, I have my um, longtime friends, John and Hazel, and they're um, in Colorado Springs. It's under John. Got it. Yeah. So I, I asked him to even start his video if he can do that. But John, yeah. Um, there you, oh, look at that. Oh, that's it's Hazel. Hazel. Hi. Nice. Hi. I'm Hazel, by the way. Yes. And of course, my friend Cindy invited me to, um, you know, here in the Zoom. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Cindy, we're going to be celebrating Cindy a little bit later because she's a, she's a smarty pants and she's been working really hard helping people. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. Anybody else here for the first time? Looks like we got everybody. All right. So in Dr. A's Habits of Health, one of the things that he talks about in chapter 14. So if you have it, uh, pull up, pull your book out to 177. We're just going to go through a little bit of an intro, possibly to um, uh, help uh, in, entice you to dive in uh, or stay on at the bottom of the hour. But Dr. A basically talks about um, that uh, planned, um, uh, in order to be healthy in the long run, you have to move your body so it stays um, limber and so that you um, your heart, uh, and lungs need to be um, um, stressed so they can stay strong. Otherwise, because if you don't stress something, stop using something, it gets weaker. And so you have to use things in order for them to stay strong. And if you use them a lot or exercise them, then they'll get even stronger. And so what was real interesting here on the first page is 60% 
of people in the United States get no regular physical activity. And Dr. A says that um, uh, 25% of us get no activity at all, none. 50% of those who begin exercising quit within six months. And one year after purchase, 90% of all exercise equipment is unused and relegated to a coat rack or a cat perch. Any of you guys um, relate to some of those stats where you have these very expensive coat racks that seem to be taking up? They're not very convenient as a coat rack either. They, they're not like designed very well for that kind of thing, right? They take up yeah. the room. Linda, you had something to say? I, I, it was just an empathetic like heck heck yes we've gotten <laughs> treadmills we've joined gyms and then paid the gym tithe um and i i didn't enjoy working out as much because i was so focused on trying to lose weight so it lost its joy and now that i've dealt with the weight part and i've gotten that big boulder out of my path or at least i'm learning to deal with it more effectively working out has become more fun so my motivation changes so i'm more likely to work out i'm not great at it but all his stats that was me and jay three years ago absolutely mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting when when people have a mindset like when i tell people i'm a health coach they will say something like um oh i need to work out or when i say you're overweight someone says yeah i need to lose some weight i'll ask them so what what's your plan well i'm gonna go work out and it just seems like um, exercise is the number one place to go in our minds to lose weight now, occasionally you'll hear people say, well, I need to change my diet a little. But I think they just sort of say that because it, it's, it's the right thing to say. But really, it's just mostly working out. And working out, really, it just, it's just not nearly as effective. It's actually a pretty bad tool for weight loss. It's a really good tool, like the number one on the planet for mental health, by the way. And, um, and you're not going to build muscle by eating the right things. You're going to build muscle by eating the right things and lifting heavy things. That's what builds muscle. And so um, it's really good at certain things, but what, what almost 99% of the people on the planet use exercise for is try to reduce weight, and it's lousy. I mean, just check, please. Just cash it in. Just stop it, really, because it just doesn't work. And so um, – but when you're talking about wellness, and well-being, it's definitely part of the equation. And Alex McMillan, he's on tonight. I don't know if he can talk or not, but we did this um, webinar a while back, um, maybe a couple years ago, and we called it Goldilocks exercise, that people either don't do, too, don't do enough exercise or they overcompensate and try to use it to compensate for their bad habits. And what we want to do is a call, uh, we called it Goldilocks exercise, trying to get it just right for what you, what you need. And we really have to recalibrate our brains um, to use exercise for what it's really good at. So um, what we're going to do um, in the next segment, we're going to go deeper into chapter 14. Uh, uh, many of us have read ahead and we actually have a little game show. We're going to do a little chapter review and then we're going to do a quiz on chapter 14 and we want you all to stay and play because it's really fun to do that but i'm going to stop the recording now and then start it over and um you don't have to go anywhere just hang out and we're going to jump into chapter 14 it'll be a lot of fun be right back